MMR inflation is here, and that means your chance to obtain the Obsidian Gladiator's mount is closer than ever. But before you start pushing, you need to know the best 3v3 comps for your spec in Dragonflight Season 2. After all, you don't want to be wasting your time on something unviable. Whether you're a casual player or a serious gamer, playing the right comp can make a big difference. That's why we put together this video, featuring the best 3v3 comps for every spec in Dragonflight Season 2. We've analyzed the data and consulted with Rank 1 players to come up with a list of comps that are both strong and competitive. So if you're serious about getting the Obsidian Gladiator's mount, be sure to watch this video. Before we get into it, we want to take a moment to remind you of the 400 rating gain guarantee available only at skillcap.com. That's right, for as low as $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see rating gains, and if you don't, then you'll get a full refund, no questions asked. With a subscription to Skillcap, you gain access to class guides that guide you step by step on how to deal rank 1 level damage, and how to survive and crowd control just like the pros you watch on Twitch. We also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals in recent months, so if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. For now though, let's get back to the video. Let's start at the top with the S tier, home to the most dominant comps in the current meta. Surprising to no one, our first S tier composition is Fire Mage, Subtlety Rogue, and Holy Priest. With their signature playstyle of crowd controlling the enemy team through a Chastis Fear on one target, a Dragon's Breath Sheep on the other, and a stun on the kill target, it's easy to see why RMP remains dominant. While RMP can be tricky to play at first, once you master the script and ensure that your kill target is pre-crowd controlled before being stunned, there is no composition RMP can't take down. RMP also has fantastic survival skills despite the Fire Mage playing Glass Cannon, as they can punish the other team's positioning and switch the tempo in an instant. If you're looking for a less formulaic version of Rogue Mage or prefer to play with a healer other than Holy Priest, Arcane Outlaw is another S tier composition. Instead of relying on setup based crowd control like Fire Sub, Arcane Outlaw relies more on winning through pure pressure and attrition with sporadic crowd controls when the opportunity arises. This makes every game as Arcane Outlaw feel different and keeps your opponents on their toes. One of the strengths of this composition is the tankiness of both the Outlaw Rogue and the Arcane Mage. This gives the enemy team no real good kill target and makes it difficult for them to close out the game. Arcane Outlaw remains in the S tier with Restoration Druid, Holy Priest, or Holy Paladin. All these healers bring their own crowd control and can take the game into dampening with strong mana restoration. It can also be played with a Disc Priest, but be prepared for it to drop down the ranks due to Discipline's weak healing, mana, and defensives. Next up in the S tier is Ret Paladin Arms Warrior, which can be played with Fist Weaver, Restoration Druid, or Holy Priest. This composition is the classic bully comp. Winning through short cross CC on the healer and kill target with Stormbolt and Hammer of Justice, eventually overwhelming the enemy team through huge pressure. Ret Warrior's strengths are its damage and survival, and the Paladin's utility allows the team to be aggressive with Blessings of Freedom, Sanctuary, Sacrifice, and Protection. Your playstyle will vary depending on your healer. With Fist Weaver, you can play extremely aggressive. With Restoration Druid, you can focus on mana conservation. And with Holy Priest, you can use short CC chains with Fear to score kills. The final S tier composition is Augmentation, with just about any high sustained melee in the game, such as Demon Hunter, Windwalker Monk, Feral Druid, Death Knight, or Warrior. As for healers, you can pair it with the hyper-aggressive Fist Weaver Monk for shorter games, a Holy Priest for more crowd control, or a Holy Paladin for more defensive cooldowns to trade and freedoms for the melee DPS. These compositions all revolve around Augmentation's 90 second kill window with Breath of the Eons and Eben Might. During this window, they will stun the kill target and burst them with Tip the Scales, Fire Breath, and Upheaval. Outside of their kill window, this comp will then focus on pressuring the enemy team to force out mana and cooldowns, making their kill window even more deadly. Augmentation Melee Healer is currently the most played composition for Gladiator and is by far the easiest to execute, so if you're wanting that easy glad, this might be for you. Now let's drop down to the a tier, where the comps are still incredibly strong but have a few more bad matchups than their S-tier counterparts. First up are the Hunters, coming in with two very similar playstyle compositions in Rhett Hunter Priest and Jungle Cleave. Both of these compositions can be played with any of the Hunter specs and are both very setup oriented, tunneling one target and performing consistent CC chains on the healer through stun traps and fears. The main difference between Rhett Hunter and Feral Hunter is that Ferals can have the option to cleave, yet are more vulnerable, which means having to kite more than a Rhett Paladin would. These comps are in the A-plus tier, as although they are strong, they require high tempo and consistent crowd control, leaving little room for error. 
These compositions can also lose on mana to the tankier comps of Augmentation Melee and Ret Warrior in the S tier. Next, we have three great compositions all revolving around Elemental Shamans. First is Ellie Boomkin Holy Paladin. This is your standard do damage and don't die caster comp where your main goal is to outlast your opponent. This composition revolves around the Boomkin cycloning the enemy team off DR to prevent taking damage. To score kills, you try to align your elemental's lasso with the Boomkin's incarnation and a root beam for massive damage. This comp is very strong in the current meta, however you do need to be able to conserve mana and know how to rotate your defensives well to live, and it can struggle into the S tier comps of Rogue Mage. The next A plus tier elemental composition is Thunder, which is typically played with Arms Warrior and Holy Paladin. However, you can substitute the Warrior for a Demon Hunter or Windwalker Monk, and the Holy Paladin for a Restoration Druid for similar results. This comp is very tanky and aims to win through attrition. Its playstyle revolves around hitting the closest target and trying to win on damage and survival, so the melee class is interchangeable as long as it brings high uptime and a mortal strike effect. When playing Thunder, make sure your melee doesn't overchase, as the comp can have trouble finishing targets. Instead, they should look to bounce around and win with cleave pressure. Our final a tier elemental composition is Elemental Outlaw, with either Holy Paladin, Restoration Druid, or Preservation of Ochre. This comp aims to play around the Outlaw Rogue's stuns, funneling damage into whoever the Outlaw decides to lock down, often opting to hit the lowest armor target. While it may seem like crowd control chains with Hex and Cyclone could be effective, this is not the case. Instead, you should focus on doing as much damage as possible while taking as little damage as possible, only using crowd control with stuns, gouge, and blind when the opportunities present themselves. Now let's take a look at Shadow Priests, who have two solid compositions in the a tier. These are the caster compositions of Destruction paired with Restoration Shaman, Restoration Druid or Holy Paladin, and the melee caster composition of Feral Holy Paladin. Destruction SP is once again a bit of a dampener, as all caster comps seem to be at the moment. It opts to look for the win on mana and get as many drinks off as possible. However, it can score early kills with a well-timed setup of Havoc Coil on both DPS targets with a stun silence on the healer, or simply by finding a window to land a fear and get off some huge chaos bolts with precognition. On the other hand, Feral Shadow is much more of a tempo comp. It looks to create incredibly long crowd control chains with all of the Shadow Priest crowd control, along with Cyclone and Repentance. Alternatively, Feral Shadow can also play to triple cleave into compositions that are very disruptive, such as Resto Shaman, Windwalker, Unholy. The final a tier comp is Boomkin Demon Hunter with either Restoration Shaman or Preservation of Ochre. This composition can deal immense instant damage from the get-go and has some crazy crowd control chains with root beams, clones, imprisonment hex, and stuns. When playing DH Boomkin, you should look to play as aggressively as possible and overwhelm the enemy team. Often, you will try to set up kills off of your Boomkin's incarnation or your Demon Hunter's eye beam The downfall of this composition is that it can easily fall behind if you don't play aggressively, since Restoration Shamans and Preservation of Ochres can both struggle to heal if they're on the back foot for too long. Dropping down to the A tier, these teams have more weaknesses than the a tier, such as lower damage, worse survivability, or setups that can be difficult to execute correctly. The first A-tier compositions are Feral Caster comps, such as Feral Arcane, Feral Fire, and Feral Destruction, all paired with a Holy Paladin or Holy Priest. These compositions can win with fairly long crowd control chains, or by winning on mana by doing massive cleave damage and cloning low health targets. By taking wild attunement, Feral Druids can build huge damage through free Feral Frenzy procs and soak kicks for their caster partner. While these compositions can win a large majority of matchups, they can be difficult to play because they require good coordination with crowd control and positioning. They are also more vulnerable to being killed quickly than the S and A plus tier comps, hence their lower ranking. Moving on, we have Demonology Warlock and Frost Mage, paired with a Restoration Druid or Holy Paladin. This composition can control the enemy team into submission with triple sheeps into triple fears. This will shut a DPS player out of the game for a very long time. This strategy results in taking a lot less damage, all the while burning the enemy's mana through Demonology's Moral Strike effect. To score kills as Demonology Frost Mage, you should look to kill with your Demonic Tyrant in combination with an Icy Veins Empowered Ray of Frost, while locking down the kill target with Axe Toss and Mortal Coil. Although Mage Lock has often been in the S tier, it is currently in the A tier due to Demonology's damage and survivability not being what it once was. This causes games to drag on for a long time and allow far less mistakes than previous iterations. Demonology Warlock can also play with an Elemental Shaman to form an A tier comp. This comp trades in the Frost Mage's crowd control for the higher consistent damage and healing of the Elemental Shaman. Like the Mage Lock comp, this comp aims to win on attrition and surviving until dampening, where it will eventually overwhelm the opposition. When playing with an Elemental Shaman, you can play with a Mistweaver Monk, Restoration Druid, or Holy Paladin. 
All these healers allow you to reach dampening and enable the Warlock to kite effectively with hots, freedoms, and teleports. For our next A tier comp, we have Windwalker Monk and Arcane Mage, paired with either a Holy Priest, Holy Paladin, or Restoration Druid. This composition features two of the most slippery classes in the game, with large damage every 45 seconds with Leg Sweep and Touch of the Magi. Windwalker Arcane will often win in dampening by doing one of these short setups with a Paralyze into Dragon's Breath on the healer, or simply winning on mana. This comp sits in the A tier because although the classes are all S tier, its kill windows are very limited. Think of it as Outlaw Arcane, but with considerably less crowd control. Another option for Windwalker Monks is to play with an Unholy Death Knight with either a Restoration Shaman or Preservation Evoker. Windwalker DK relies on big setups with Grip, Blinding Sleet, and Leg Sweep to pack a punch on its goes. Combine that with the crowd control and extra damage of both Restoration Shamans and Preservation Evokers, and you have a deadly mix of disruption and aggression. However, Windwalkers and Death Knights take very high damage between the setups against just about every composition on the ladder, be it an augmentation with a melee, a melee cleave, or a caster composition. Windwalker DK is squishy. The only option for this comp is to either run between the goes or try to snowball pressure, but you have to really know the limits of how much damage you can afford to take. The final A tier composition, PHDK, plays much faster and more aggressively than any other A tier composition. It is made up of an Unholy Death Knight, any Hunter specialization, and a Holy Paladin or Holy Priest. This comp combines unavoidable crowd control with massive damage on low armor targets, making it a nightmare for casters to face. The Hunter can consistently land crowd control that won't break using Diamond Ice Trap, while the Death Knight keeps the kill target in place with Chains of Ice and Death Grips. Any Hunter specialization can be effective in PHDK, as they all do incredible damage to cloth and leather targets. However, this composition is not quite A plus or S tier due to how Q dependent it is. If you Q into a lot of melee cleaves, you will have some poor results, as you will not be able to kill through their high physical damage mitigation. Moving down to the B tier, we have some compositions for those less fortunate classes at the bottom of the food chain. Affliction Warlocks can do a lot of damage in the right scenarios, but they are easily locked down if tunneled, interrupted, or have their curses dispelled. They are also generally very squishy. The first Affliction Warlock composition is to pair yourself with a Feral Druid or an Assassination Rogue, and either a Restoration Druid, Holy Paladin, or Fist Weaver. This combo can do incredible cleave damage to the entire enemy team, while the Warlock tries to keep themselves alive through kiting and self-healing. The downfall of these compositions is how vulnerable both DPS are. They take as much damage as they dish out, so any target can simply be locked down and killed in a matter of seconds. The other Affliction Warlock composition in the B tier is paired with a Shadow Priest and either a Holy Paladin or Restoration Druid. This composition aims to rot people down with silences and horrifies on the healer. It has a very linear kill condition. Do damage, don't die, and win on mana. Unfortunately, Shadow Priest damage is not quite high enough for this strategy, and most Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests take some of the highest damage in the game. This makes the dampening composition far too high risk for the gameplay it sets out to achieve. Moving on from Affliction, Enhance is finally making an appearance with the Timeless Turbo composition, playing with an Arms or Fury Warrior and either a Holy Paladin, Restoration Druid, or a Holy Priest. Turbo is played similarly to Retribution Warrior. You pick a target, tunnel them down, and try to brute force your way through the enemy team's defensives while cycling through your own. Unfortunately for Enhancement Shaman, they take too much damage for this gameplay against other melee cleaves, so they often lose out in head-to-head -head brawls. Additionally, Enhancement Shaman utility pales in comparison to Ret Paladin, as they cannot keep their team offensive outside of Wind Shear's short duration and grounding totem. Enhancement Shaman can also find themselves playing with a Subtlety Rogue and a Holy Priest in a composition based around one-shotting targets with Doom Winds and Ascendants. This setup is generally pretty gimmicky, but it can yield decent results if you prefer a hit-and-run playstyle. Finally, we arrive at the C tier, where we find two of the weakest classes in the game, Devastation Evokers and Frost Death Knights. Devastation Evoker and Frost Death Knight, paired with a Holy Priest or Discipline Priest, has enough damage to one-shot any class in the game. Using a hit-and-run playstyle, this composition relies on one-minute goes with Deep Breath and Blinding Sleep to crowd control the entire enemy team and quickly burst them down with Dragon Rage. While this sounds excellent in theory, these setups are incredibly telegraphed for most experienced teams. If the go is disrupted, the composition has little to do until the next one, while they try to survive as best they can. This is one of the rare times that Disciplined Priest can be a strong pick, as its gimmicky nature benefits from Dark Archangel. As always, these tier lists are collaboration with Rank 1 and Professional players. Your mileage may vary depending on rating, but we try to adjust our data to reflect every bracket. 
And if you're interested in gaining 400 rating risk-free this season, check out the discount link below. Skillcapped is the only place that promises results with our rating gain guarantee, ensuring that you will hit your rating goals while using our website. Not only do you get access to thousands of videos, but also rank one player support in our revolutionary Ask a Pro forum. Every season, Skillcapped helps players just like you reach their potential. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description for an exclusive discount offer. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.